Hello everyone and welcome back to Game on Caffeine, my name is Isaac and we're back playing some Agrarian Skies for episode 48 and what I want to do today is I want to set up a big reactor. Now this has been something that we kind of started to do a couple of episodes back but then got sidetracked so we're coming back around to it, we're going full circle and I want to get a, a big reactor set up because that'll give us a nice amount of power and that'll set us up nicely to do some of the other uh, bigger quests that we didn't quite have enough power to do yet and yeah, that's our plan. So, uh, we've got some of the stuff already that we need to get ourselves a big reactor. If we type in uh, reactor, we have 36 reactor casing, we've got a reactor control rod, a uh, controller, a power tap, and an access port. And this is actually all the stuff we need, but uh, we just need, actually, it's, mm, kind of, we need some more reactor casing. I think we need about 56 in order to make a 5x5 reactor, which is what I'm going to start with today. And then we need about, I think, about 44-ish reactor glass, which is actually includes reactor casing, so we need like another 44 reactor casing. We need a lot of stuff. Um, we also need a bunch of hardened glass, and what I've done between last episode and this one is I've set up the induction smelter here. I took down the uh, redstone energy cell and put it beneath this, because uh, we don't really need it up here. And what I've done here is I have taught my ME system how to craft hardened glass. And all I did was I said uh, to the, I've put uh, an ME interface above this, pointed it down towards the uh, smeltery, and said that if you put two hardened, if you put two, uh, two lots of pulverized obsidian, which is eight pulverized obsidian, and one lidinga in there, you will be able to get back two hardened glass. And I also taught it that this is how, uh, to make pulverized obsidian, you put obsidian in there. And lead ingots, I think we already had lead ingots, but I did also teach the system that. Uh, Blocks of lead turn into nine lead ingots because most of our lead is in ingot form. So if we have a look, I think we have about 12 hardened glass. Yep. And if I requested, say, I don't know. Uh, hmm. Actually, let's let's do it a different way. Let's say we want to make... Uh, how much reactor glass have we got? 36. I think we need about 45 reactor glass to get what we need done. Um, let me think about this. 9, 18, 27... Uh, 36, 39, 41, 42. Yeah, about 45 should be fine. So if we can get ourselves 45 reactor casing and then teach it that two reactor, uh, one reactor casing and two hardened glass makes a reactor glass, then I think we should be pretty good to go. So uh, we've, I've been making some steel over here because uh, reactor casing does indeed need some steel. How are you doing? Not very good. Uh, I didn't realize actually that uh, in order to make uh, steel, you had to use charcoal in this thing. So I'll grab some charcoal. Uh, you have to use gunpowder, redstone, sand in this order. If you don't put it in this order, it just makes iron. I realize this where I've got iron here. And you have to use charcoal. You can't use coal in this, which is uh, I thought was kind of odd. Uh, anyway, we can take that. We can take that. We're almost at another, uh, another block of steel, which is nice. And I think we should possibly be able to make uh, what we need. Do we have any graphite? Uh, we should have got a ton of graphite. Okay. Let's make all that steel, and then let's go for some reactor casing. Okay. Boom. Nice, okay, we've got 20 reactor casing, okay. So, if we want to make, say, 45 reactor glass, all we'd have to do is, actually, let's... Instead of that, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do something different. I'm actually, instead, going to set up the reactor, and then I'll cut away, and I'll make a bunch more reactor casing, and then we'll turn that into reactor glass. So, uh, where do I want to set this up? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm thinking probably underground somewhere, where most of our other stuff is, but I don't know where we've got that much space. Um, could put it over here somewhere, I guess. Let's have a look. I need to eat some food. If I don't eat, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Is my sound off? No, it's not. It's just, oh, God, I thought <laughs> I thought was falling then. That was uh, that was quite something. Uh, it feels like it sounds off. It's really quiet. I hope it's not that quiet for you guys. Uh, let's put this. Doo -doo -doo. Actually, hmm. No, we'll put it We'll put it up. We'll put it up top somewhere. Up top sounds nice. We will put it over. Ah, where do you want to put it? We could put it here, I guess. Kind of an odd place, but we could put it here. Yeah, let's put it here. Why not? Okay. So we're going to need... I'm going to make a 5x5. Five five, like this. And for those who've never used the Big Reactors mod before, this is quite a nice little uh, tutorial. So basically, you need to make a, a shell, a cube shape of some kind. I don't think it has to be a, a cube. You can make it um, like rectangular if you'd like. But uh, just square shaped. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 2, 3, 4, 5, and the outer casing like this has to be made of reactor casing. Now, uh, the, in between this, uh, not the middle, like in between, let me show you real quick. In between this here can be reactor casing, and it'll probably be cheaper, but I think it looks better with reactor glass. But uh, the, re the outside has to be casing, you can't use glass around the outside, uh, that's not allowed. It will be not working 
So fill this up like this. I think the bottom floor there can be glass, but uh, I, usually, I usually just fill it in with uh, with casing. Again, uh, the only reason I use glass, I think the only reason glass is there is because it kind of looks cool. Uh, you could fill the whole thing up with reactor casing and it would be probably a, a more eff efficient way of doing it. But it looks really cool when you've got like the, the liquid flowing inside. So I'm going to break this. I, I usually fill the floor with reactor casing like that. And that's our cube. So now all we've got to do is we can put down the uh, the taps and all the other stuff. So reactor uh, controller, access port, power tap, and the control rod as well. We can put that down in a second as well. Uh, let's put down these three first. So I'll put down my controller in the middle. I'll put down the access port here and the power tap. So the access port is where you put in the fuel uh, that the, the reactor uses. So in this case, Eulorium. You'll put the Eulorium in there. You'll get some cyanide back because once it's used it up, it gives back cyanide. That's just how it works. And then the power tap, of course, is where the power comes from. And it says not enough control rods. The reactor requires at least one control rod, control rod to work. And uh, we have a control rod right here. And this guy needs to go in the middle somewhere like this and this guy is supposed to go above uh, wherever you put your fuel rods and at the moment we don't have any fuel rods so let's have a look what does it take to get some fuel rods to get these guys we're going to need some more steel some more graphite and some more eulorium so we don't have a ton of that stuff uh, so we'll uh, we'll get that in a second but uh, another thing is this thing runs off eulorium and we don't have that much eulorium i don't think if we go have a look in here uh, i think we've got about 20 uh, we got we got 26. <laughs> we got a bit, but not a ton. Uh, uh, but it turns out that you can actually make it by using pulverized tin and pulverized sulfur. And another cool thing is they've now added sort of like ex nihilo compatibility with this stuff. So now it tells you that if you sift sand, these are the things you can get. And it actually turns out you can actually get your lorium dust by sifting sand. It's a two percent chance, but you can get it. So what I'm also thinking about doing is setting back up. Uh, because at the moment we're not actually sifting any sand, we turned it off because uh, it wasn't giving us really most of the stuff in there. We don't really need. Uh, if we look back over at uh, sand, like a lot of this crushed stuff we don't really need and the cactus seeds and the spores and stuff, limestone, we don't need most of this stuff. So we stopped sieving sand. But what I'm thinking about doing is setting it up again, setting up like uh, something like I've got over here. This one's producing, is this producing sand? I think it is actually. Maybe. I think it was designed to produce sand. Yeah, because it should be doing... Yeah, yeah, this should be making sand, actually, shouldn't it? Uh, so I might use these, even. And what I'm thinking about doing, though, is getting a vacuum hopper, having them sift through it, but then uh, having a, a, a trash can so that everything that's not Eulorium gets thrown away and then we only get the Eulorium back because otherwise we just get a flipping inventory full of stuff. Like, if we look in our, uh, in our system, I bet we have a ton of cactus seeds, don't we? Look, at that, we've got 542 cactus seeds, uh, spores. We have, like, 181 spores. We don't need that stuff. It's just filling up, the, filling up all this space. We don't really need it. Uh, so that's that, and what I'm going to do is I am going to... Actually, I think we have some sulfur, so we should be okay for this episode. We'll get some sulfur, and we'll get some tin, and we'll pulverize that and mix that together, and we should be good to go. So tin, uh, pulverize all that. Uh, we should be good to go for the Eulorium for this episode, but in future episodes, we're going to need more of it, of course. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I am going to sit here and go through all this steel, make a bunch of uh, reactor casing, this stuff here, then request a bunch of hardened glass, turn it all into reactor glass, and I'll be back in a second once I have all that stuff set up and ready to go. Why are you... Oh, this thing is so slow. It's so slow. Ah, ah, this could take a while, guys. Can I put Can I put iron blocks in there? Does that work? Hmm. I might try that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go away. I'm going to make a bunch of reactor glass, and I'll be back in a second. All right, so quite a while later, and we have, I think, almost enough hardened glass and reactor glass even uh, to complete this thing. So just a quick tip for anyone using the high oven here. Uh, you can actually use blocks of iron. It is a lot faster, and this thing does get quite fast at 2,000 degrees. So it, things happen a lot quicker. I've got 98 <laughs> steel ingots just sat in there right now. Um, but yeah, it seems to do it a lot faster, and it seems to be more efficient as well because it still only uses one of each of these, uh, which is quite nice. So that's that. Uh, I have almost enough to, uh, to fill this up. I think if I have a look... Um, in here we should have the remaining hardened glass. We've got eight there and then reactor glass. Do we have some lying around? Not reactor glass, reactor casing. Um, I'm sure I had some. Let's have a look. It might be in the crafting section of this bit. Yeah, there it is. So, boom. And there we go. Six should be more than enough. So, the way this works now is we've got to put our fuel rods in the middle because this is where our fuel is going to go. So if you made a bigger reactor, or if you want to, I guess you could probably put more in this one. It's uh, quite a small reactor, but you could do, I guess. Um, basically, you have you can have as many of these uh, reactor control rods as you like, and then you put these fuel rods in the middle, and this is where the uh, the eulorium, the fuel, would sit. 
So the more of these you have, the more fuel you can have in at once, and therefore the more power you can produce at once. So you can put as many of these in as you want. The more the better, the bigger the reactor, the more powerful it's going to be. Uh, I think I will put a link in the description to a, um, a spreadsheet that there is, and it just uh, it like like there's some more efficient reactors than others, more efficient like sizes and layouts. Um, but that's not it. What you've got to put in as well as, as this stuff is you've got to put a coolant around the uh, the fuel rods. So there are a couple of coolants you can use. You can use uh, energized glowstone, destabilized redstone, and uh, whatever the end of pearl liquid is. Uh, you can use all of them from thermal expansion. You can even use diamond blocks. But uh, for now, we're going to use water because we're poor. <laughs> and we could probably use redstone, destabilized redstone, but... Yeah, it takes a while to cook up. I might switch over to it later on. I kind of want to switch up to diamond blocks because I tested this in single player and it literally, it literally doubled the amount of uh, power output we got by replacing water with diamond blocks, which I thought was pretty insane. So uh, what we can do is let's grab a bucket. Uh, we don't have a bucket. Let's make a bucket <laughs> and then grab some water. So what we can do is uh this might take a while we have to run back and forth but uh, we almost have enough diamond blocks i think we need about 220 ish uh diamonds in order to fill this thing with diamond blocks and we had like 180 i think so we, we, we're so close but that would use all of our diamonds up uh it, but the good thing is it doesn't actually use them up i've just said that but it doesn't use them up it, uh, it actually they're just sitting here and you could get them back at any time which is quite nice so as soon as i got that i should have an unlimited water source that i can just pull from let me in Ugh. let me grab free water let me use it. Ah, I hate water. I hate trying to work with it. Come on. Here we go. In we go. There we go. And boop. Did that work? No. Um. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right. I need to be able to pull it from this block. Around here. There we go. Oh, my God. This is horrible. This is... What the heck? Come on. Come on now. You know what will probably be easier? Doing this from the top. Let's let's close this up and let's get on top of the reactor. That would make a lot more sense. Yeah, so we can just close this up and it should actually take shape now, even though... Yeah, there we go. You'll see you've done it right when it turns into a nice multi-block structure like that. Uh, let's get on top of this thing just to make things... Just to make life a bit easier. Uh, let's break into this casing. This casing's pretty strong, not gonna lie. Gotta be careful with it. Come on. This is the world's slowest block to break. And yet, he tries to break it anyway. Because he wants to put water into his big reactor to produce power for his agrarian skies. Okay, can we... Can we can we not pull from the middle there? Okay, apparently not. Alright, we can grab some more water. That's no big deal. Uh, hook it up. Uh, and then we've just got to throw some yellowium in it. So I did cook some uh, yellowium ingots up between uh, a minute ago when you last saw me. And we should be pretty good to set this thing going. So the yellowium does last quite a while. We're not going to need a ton of the stuff. Um, but we definitely are going to need more than the... I think we've got like a stack of it now. So we're definitely going to need more than that. Uh, I wish we could pull from this middle bit. That's annoying. Uh, but it's okay. I can get the one more. And then I'm going to have to go swimming in the thing again to get some flipping... Uh, to get that reactor glass back. But that's fine. Do I have... I got four, so... I, um, I might have enough. I don't know. We could always just leave that stuff float. No, that annoy the heck out of me. Okay, so let's... Right. Uh, let's throw you... Let's break some glass so that we can get out. Because otherwise it's going to take forever to break this glass once we're in there. So we'll break this glass. Then we'll fill in that last spot. We'll jump in. We'll get the reactor glass. And then we will uh, test this thing out. See if it works. So, come on. Come on. There we go. Okay. Thank you. All right, throw this down there, pick up the reactor glass stuff, leave the reactor, and then fill it in. Okay, so we have ourselves a reactor ready to go. So let's see if we can get ourselves uh, some eulorium. There we go, we've got 35. That should be fine. I, uh, I thought we had more, but I probably used a lot of it to make the reactor casing. Throw that in there, and what should happen is we should see stuff... Now, this didn't light up. What if I... Oh, I've got, I've got a hole in the top. That's why. Let's uh, let's fix this. There we go. Now, we should see that yellow I'm going in. There we go. And if we look in here, we have 100% uh, full. Max capacity is 1,000... Uh, 12,000 millibuckets of eulorium. And we can just turn this thing on. So, actually, what we should probably do before then is uh, either find a... Actually, no, what we can do, we can actually turn, we can turn it on. It has, like, a nice internal buffer here. We can hold up to... Is that a million redstone flux? 
10 million? You've got a lot of redstone flux. So we'll turn this on. And boom, it's making stuff. Stuff's happening. And it produces quite a lot as well, actually. You can see it's producing about 500. I think it says in the 500s. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Uh, and So there we go. It's producing about 562 redstone flux per tick. Uses 0.084 millibuckets per tick. So it uses this fuel up really quite slowly. Uh, and then the fuel reactivity, 100%. And this is pretty cool. So once we replace this with diamond blocks, it actually goes from 500 to about 1.2 kilobucket uh, kilo redstone flux per tick, which is pretty insane. Uh, so you can see it is storing it up in here. We've got a nice supply of power going over there. Uh, how much power are we getting from our, our system already? We have a bunch of... Uh, magnetic dynamos, don't we? Let's have a look. So these all produce 80 redstone flux per tick, and we have how many? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we've only got 70, so we're only producing about 560 redstone flux per tick from all of those, and then another 500 plus from all of, from that guy up there. So he's producing quite a lot, and all we've got to do to upgrade him is, well, I say all we've got to do is produce like 200 and some diamonds, which is pretty insane. But uh, it'll, it'll last quite a while. It produces a nice amount of power, and we should have a good amount of power to, to move on to some of the more power-demanding quests, like, uh, is it for the hoarding? Might be. Yeah, we've got... Uh, Automated mining. Once you have an extra power, you may want to look into automated mining options. Uh, in this pack, there are two. The laser drill and the ender quarry from extra utilities. The laser drill needs to be printed. Uh, I don't think we can actually make the ender quarry. I'm pretty sure I'll look this up, and I don't think we can. Uh, ender quarry is this guy. Uh, so we need to... Oh, we could, but it's the Iridium ore that takes like a decade to find. So, uh, yeah, we're probably not going to do that. But we can, what we can do is uh, we can look into getting the... Um, the laser drill and the laser drill pre-chargers. How hard are they to make? Laser drill. Uh, some diamonds. Some glowstone illuminators. Not too hard. And the laser drill pre-chargers need some pink slime balls. And some lasers and stuff. And it's not some diamonds. Uh, we could probably do that, actually. That shouldn't be too bad. They do use a heck of a lot of power, though. So uh, we may have to upgrade this uh, to something better. Like I say, uh, I try... You can use uh, the... the um, liquid ender pearls i can't remember what it's called but uh be warned it's hard to put down like i was faffing around and then trying to get water in but with the ender pearl liquid you jump around it teleports you whenever you touch the liquid so yeah just just beware of that and the energized glowstone when you try to put that stuff down it actually flows upwards so if you put like water if you put it down it'll flow down uh, energized glowstone flows upwards which makes it a real pain to deal with but uh, redstone should be fine energy uh, destabilized redstone should be fine for that stuff um unfortunately for some reason our magic forest biome seems to still end about there just before the flipping mob spawning thing we've got over there uh, i have seen a lot of uh, angry oh god <laughs> i have seen a lot of angry uh, angry zombies spawning around here uh, which is not the best i think they might be spawning under the tree if i press f7 no, no, there's no spot where they should spawn, but apparently they still are spawning because it's a magic forest biome, and that's just what they like to do. So, I think I will call it there for this episode. Thank you very so much for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, and I will see you next time. Bye! -bye.